Hey, what's going on guys? So recently we had the Shizuoka Hobby Show 2023 there in Japan and I did a couple of videos there covering all the new announcements and everything from the show and on the Bandai portion, far and away the comment that I saw from you guys the most was a lot about the MGs or lack of any MG announcement there at the Hobby Show and this is a video that I've been thinking about doing for a long time so I thought now is a good time to do this. In this video we'll talk about MGs because I know there's a lot of worry and concern out there in the community whether the MG line in general is just kind of dying off or being killed off by Bandai or being replaced with the full mechanics line. I don't think that any of that is necessarily true, but that's what we're going to talk about in today's video. We're going to talk about the state of the Master Grade line from Bandai, starting off with a bit of history about the Master Grade line. We'll get into kind of the current state of the Master Grade line, a little bit of kind of points of contention with the Master Grade line at the moment, and predictions and like kind of my predictions about what I think is in the future for the Master Grade line and what I would like to see in the Master Grade line. So just want to say a big shout out to everybody in my Discord server that helped me out with preparing for this video. Uh, I got a bunch of notes here, There's a bunch of things I want to talk about here for this video. So hope that you guys enjoy it. And again, thank you to everybody in my Discord server that helped out with preparing for this. If you guys want to join the Discord server, it's a Patreon reward. So if you guys want to join Patreon and then you can also join the Discord, Check the link in the video description down below. Thank you guys all so much. Okay, let's get into it, talking a little bit about the history of the Master Grade lines. The Master Grade line started in 1995. At the time, that was the 15th anniversary of Gundam, so that was part of the 15th anniversary celebration was to kick off this new line of Master Grades. And we now have over 220 different Master Grade kits just in the standard release line. Of course, there's many more than that if you count different event exclusives and premium Bandai exclusives and Halby Pro Shop exclusives, stuff like that. So there's a lot of stuff. And now we also have a couple of kind of branch lines with the MGSD and uh, MGEX lines. So there's kind of a lot of Master Grades over that time period going for now almost 30 years. So what it means to be a Master Grade is kind of hard to define because what if you take a look at those early Master Grades compared to what we have for more modern Master Grades, there's not a lot that's really similar between them other than the scale. So let's talk about like what actually makes a Master Grade, what defines a Master Grade kit. And I should clarify that for the purposes of this video, we're only talking about Master Grade Gundam kits. There are a few different non-Gundam Master Grade kits, kits that have the Master Grade label, but they're not Gundam like Dragon Ball, Pat Labor, stuff like that. So not talking about those. All the Gundam kits that are Master Grades are all in 100 scale. Uh, they all have a seated pilot figure in the cockpit. That's another kind of staple of the line. They all feature some sort of inner frame detail. Now, obviously the early kits didn't have the full inner frame that we kind of are have grown to expect as like a staple of the line now, but that certainly wasn't the case at the beginning. There was certainly a lot of detail will you know I say a lot kind of depending on depending on the kit uh, there was detail underneath some of the armor parts and things like that that was not present in other lines really so much at the time uh, so the master grade lines one of the things that has been true from the master grade line from the start until now is that uh, the Bandai has attempted to include more details kind of underneath the armor, whether that be partial inner frame or the full inner frame like we see on the more modern ones. And other than that, it, there's not really too much that really kind of defines the line. There's not like any specific things like if we wanted to define the real grade line, one of the things you might say uh, defines the real grade line is the overall, the exterior appearance of the ROG kits all have, you know, kind of the multi-tone colors. So you have like the multi-tone on like the ARC-72, for example, multi-tone white, multi-tone blue. Um, so that kind of visual aesthetic has been present and like the way that the armor is designed to have, you know, very detailed armor on the outside and also multiple color tones. That's been pretty standard uh, throughout the entirety of the RG line. The inner frame gimmick of the RG line, you know, has kind of gone away in more recent kits. So you could say that that's also been kind of inconsistent about that line, but visually on the outside, they're pretty consistent. Whereas with Master Grades, even the visual aesthetic on the outside, you know, changes wildly between different series from like UC or Seed Master Grade kits. And that's obviously just due to the designs of the Gundams, but the level of detail and kind of the design of them, you can tell sometimes they're going for a bit more anime accuracy and then sometimes they're going for a bit more kind of stylized and detailed depending on the kit. And there's not really too much consistency in the Master Grade line. So when you're talking about Master Grade Gunpla, in general, it's almost kind of too vague to really kind of talk about the entirety of the Master Grade line in general. That said, there were some really interesting features of the Master Grade line that did make it quite unique that have unfortunately gone away. And so a few of those 
would include something like the detail parts, which were present on the first about a dozen or so Master Grade kits, I feel like maybe two dozen. Uh, early Master Grade kits included some extra little detail parts there on the runner that you could include on there if you wanted. There wasn't even in cl like clear instructions as to where those parts should go on the kit. They're just there on the runner that you can use on the kit if you want or not. They're just like these tiny little detail parts. And that was a really cool feature to have that included with the kit that you can use on there to add some more detail. That's gone away. We also have lost the mechanical illustrations in the manual. So in the manual on the earlier Master Grade kits, and this is probably like for the first 10 years or so of the Master Grade line, I guess we had the a lot of really cool mechanical illustrations in the manual. And that was really nice for people who are just fans of that kind of illustration work. If you're a fan of the Gundam, it's cool to see. Of course, it's all in Japanese. So if you can't read Japanese, you can't really get too much from the text without translating it. But the illustrations themselves were really cool to see there in the manual. I also have the large like kind of cardboard uh, insert piece with like a big photograph of the painted build that used to be kind of like right there on top. When you open up the box, you have that big large photo card there. That's uh, obviously gone away. Another thing would be the dry transfer decals. Now, honestly, I kind of wish that from the beginning of the line until now, kind of everything from Bandai included water slide decals. I think that's just kind of a, a general criticism of Bandai in all of their stuff. I wish that they included more water slide decals in their products, but at least uh, with the earlier Master Grade kits, it was pretty standard for them to come with at least some dry transfer decals. That also has obviously gone away with the more recent releases. And then the other thing would be the 120 scale pilot figures that were included. Again, uh, I do have a little bit of criticism with those just in the fact that they are molded uh, for whatever reason in that kind of like softer plastic. I wish that they just would have been molded in just kind of standard polystyrene, but uh, they included the 120 scale pilot figures, which were really cool. And that was a really nice aspect of those kits uh, to have in there just kind of as an extra little thing. It's not to scale with the kit itself, but it was cool to have those included. So those are some of the, I think, really nice features of the early, of the Master Grade line earlier on and at different points, because some of the early kits didn't have the pilot figures, for example. That was something that kind of was uh, not in the line at the beginning, and then it was, and then it's gone again. So. Uh, there's different things that have been a part of the Master Grade line that I think it's very unfortunate that those have gone away. Now, I think for all of those points, probably the reason for getting rid of all of that stuff that I just mentioned probably just comes down to Bandai wanting to sell that stuff separately. It's so like, for example, the detail parts, obviously now they sell detail parts separately, not those exact same ones, unfortunately, but they sell uh, separate decals. And that is something that we'll come back to later, but uh, you know, obviously they sell different decal sets for different Gundams. Um, they also sell the, for like the mechanical illustrations, I think they started just putting those into the different Gundam archive, uh, different books that you could buy separately. So um, yeah, it's great because the books are much more you know there's a lot more in the books uh, aside from the mechanical illustrations there's all sorts of different illustrations and stuff so I think the books are really great uh, but it still would be nice if they would have at least kept a little bit of that actually in the manual uh, for the kits but there's all sorts of different Gundam archive books and things like that that are still available uh, to buy separately for that kind of stuff uh, if you're interested in those type of illustrations of the Gundams and mechanical illustrations stuff like that. As for the pilot figures I don't know because Bandai doesn't really do that aside from like figure eyes which is kind of much more recent and those, that's not even really Gundam pilots most of the time uh, so you know if you wanted like a little bit larger anything like larger scale figures of different Gundam pilots and stuff like that you would basically just have to go like the route of resin garage kit type stuff which is not anything that's like really wildly widely available so i don't know my estimation as to why a lot of this stuff has gone away is just for number one bandai to just cut cost obviously they just want to try to make the kits you know as cheap to produce as possible so that they can be as cheap uh, to the consumers as possible and they can sell more units obviously uh, but I think another reason probably is just that they wanted to take some of that stuff that they were just giving out like for free kind of essentially with the master grade kits and be able to upsell you and sell that stuff separately so now let's talk a little bit about what are some of the current issues that we're facing with the master grade line as it is kind of in recent years so i think the most obvious and the most common issue of course is just the lack of releases in general so i wanted to take a look kind of back at the timeline to kind of see uh, in the early years of the Master Grades, they were released basically quarterly. We were getting about four or five per year. Uh, around 1999, it started to tick up to about 10 per year that we were getting out. 2001, we got 11 Master Grade kits. And again, I'm talking just about standard release stuff here. 
Uh, but in the early days, that's pretty much all that there was. They didn't really get into uh, premium stuff or event exclusive stuff too much until kind of around 2000 and after that. But uh, 2002, we had 12 Master Grade releases out that year. It peaked in 2008 where we had 14 different Master Grades released as standard releases in that year. If you can imagine that, that's 14 standard release master grades in a year it seems unimaginable now at this point point. and obviously some of those are variants of like past release kits and everything it's not like 14 completely new original kits by any means but that is a lot to come out in 2002 it dipped down to 13 2012 i should say it dipped down to um, 13 and then between uh 2015 to 2016 it like con continued to fall from like seven per year to then three per year in 2016 it went back up a little bit three in 2016 was uh different because that's when we got like the thunderbolt verka mgs so that was like those are like pretty big kits the thunderbolt gundam the psycho zaku and then there was another th a third one i forget what it was but those are pretty big master grade kits to come out in that year that's why it was kind of low 2019 as recently as 2019 we did get seven standard master grade releases in 2019 so it's not like that it's been kind of very low for a long time. That's only, well, this is four years ago now, but then the past couple of years, which has been, you know, certainly the time we've been dealing with COVID among other things going on in the world, uh, it's been basically like around three per year, dipping down to as little as basically last year. I think we really only had two, which was just two different versions of the Dom, uh, which was not even a completely new kit. It was even just like a 1.5. So yeah, I mean, it certainly has slowed down quite a bit in terms of the number of releases. Uh, some other kind of things that are currently, you know, issues among the Master Grade kits, like I talked about earlier, one of the things is just the lack of consistency where you have some kits differing wildly in terms of their detail, both on the inside and the outside. So as I said, the inner frame is something that's kind of been like a staple of the Master Grade line. But the inner frame, you know, sometimes you have kits that have very detailed and complex inner frames like the Barbatos, like the Sazabi Verka, which is not even that new. The Sazabi Verka is probably like almost 10 years, around 10 years old now at this point. Um, so you have some kits with like the really complex inner frames and a lot of details and stuff. And then you have even some of the most recent kits like the Gunner Zaku Warrior, the Jin, some of like the Master Grade Seed kits that we've had out recently with very simple inner frames, or I've talked a lot about this before where it kind of really blurs the line between full mechanics and uh, the Master Grade line with some of the full mechanics kits like the recent Raider and Calamity Gundam, for example, having a pretty much full inner frame and being almost a Master Grade for all intents and purposes. And so this is why it is kind of difficult when Master Grades come out or when you're speaking about Master Grades in general just to say like what you expect from a Master Grade because if you have a master grade kit that comes out that's particularly expensive people are going to complain it's too expensive but maybe one of the reasons that it's more expensive is because it has the more complex inner frame whereas if you have a master grade that comes out at a lower price point which is much more palatable for a lot of people but maybe it has a little bit more simple inner frame and then people are going to complain that there's not enough detail on the inner frame so it's kind of a really difficult situation where you just don't really have any like standard for the line. The other kind of big issue that it seems like people have with the line is just kind of what actually Bandai chooses to produce as your standard release MGs because you know P Bandai since let's see like starting off around 2012 is when uh, P Bandai kind of really started to kick off uh, with a lot more releases. We've seen a lot of stuff coming out as like either completely original molds, like completely new molds, like something like the Gundam Mark V, for example, is a totally new mold that came out as just a P-Bandai kit, uh, or some like very popular variants, stuff like the Endless Waltz Master Grades from Gundam Wing, for example. You would think that those would be pretty popular mobile suits and just being like from the movie, that they would be popular enough to release as standard Master Grades, but we saw stuff like that um, just coming out as premium Bandai kits, which, you know, are obviously perfectly easily accessible for people in certain parts of the world but for you know people all over the world not necessarily as easily accessible especially for you know the list price the, the release price the msrp from bandai of that where you take a kit that may be released for you know six thousand yen in japan typically a kit like that here in america would then retail for around 65 70 dollars something like that maybe uh, but before we had p bandai here in the u.s for example you would be paying probably you know close to double that in terms of what you had to pay for that. So anywhere in other different countries where you don't have P-Bandai available to you, yeah, you're paying probably, you know, double or triple, if not 
possibly more. I hope not, but I'm sure it probably happens where you're paying even more than that uh, for the P Bandai releases. So I certainly understand uh, people's concern about that, but just uh, to play devil's advocate for Bandai a little bit on this one, and I'll kind of come back to doing some more of that later on, but I'll just say that, you know, what Bandai is actually releasing the kit for is at a very re very reasonable price if you can get it from Bandai directly. It's only the only reason that you're having to pay so much more for those premium Bandai releases is because you have to go through, you know, secondary parties, secondary or a third, uh, you know, party distributors in order to get those and all shipping costs and everything else that comes in between on that. So the, there's a reason why they're so expensive. It's unfortunate uh, for a lot of people outside of Japan, but that is still, you know, every, you have to remember that Japan is still Bandai's like far and away primary uh, our audience, their primary market where they're selling to. So, you know, if you imagine like, especially for the premium Bandai releases, probably 80 or 90% of that is stays in Japan and, you know, whatever other percent, you know, goes out to other countries. So I think the Bandai is probably not too concerned with, uh, you know, people complaining about the pricing of those outside because they're still selling the bulk of that stuff perfectly fine there in Japan, unfortunately, but I know that does uh, make it more expensive. Anyway, this is not a video about Premium Bandai, I won't spend too much time on that. But yeah, in terms of what Bandai does choose to make for standard release master grades, it does seem that there's a lot of like rehashing, so they're either like remaking, you know, popular mobile suits that already have an MG, whether it being like a 1.5 like we saw with the Dom, or 2.0s, and 2.0s is kind of difficult because yeah, 2.0s are really nice, uh, but at the same time, you would also like to see some new stuff because there's plenty, plenty, plenty of different Gundam and mobile suit designs that, you know, don't have any MG representation at all. So it'd be nice to get new stuff all the time. But that said, I think the 2.0s are pretty nice. If we got to a point where we were getting Master Grades more regularly, uh, you know, I think people probably wouldn't complain about, you know, a certain portion of those being 2.0s so long as we were still getting a lot of new stuff as well. But the other thing is just like uh, Bandai just kind of leaving easy releases on the table. Like for example, the uh, making a Master Grade Leo. You would think that they could make a Master Grade Leo based off of some parts of the uh, inner frame, some of the release of the Tall Geese, for example, that they could then kind of adapt that. So they already kind of have, what I mean is they already kind of have at least part of the kit is already made for a different release. They really only have to make, you know, they only have to produce half of a new kit in order to put out another new uh, variant of that. Other notable examples would obviously be, you know, the Master Grade IBO line, for example, in more recent years, we got the Master Grade uh, Barbatos, and we would expect that they would use that same Gundam interframe to make, you know, at least one, two, three other more Master Grade IBO Gundams by now, but so far nothing. So it seems like um, there's just a lot of people end up waiting for what seems like it would be an easy release for Bandai. Uh, but we don't end up getting those something like the uh, like a 2.0 speaking of 2.0s like a 2.0 Zaku 1 for example we had the 2.0 Zaku 2 come out a long it's probably like 15 years old now if not more than that I think the, the uh, Zaku 2 version 2.0 has been out for a long time and we still don't have a 2.0 Zaku 1 you know another example being like the goof custom for example we already have the 2.0 goof uh, you would think that they could reuse uh, at least some of that frame to make a, a 2.0 or at least a 1.5 or something of the goof custom for example so yeah there's a lot of stuff that we would like bandai to make i think just another thing to keep in mind is that they can't make everything you know at all at once so they do have to time their releases for different reasons just as far as like being able to sell the kits being able to market the kits they need to have some time in between and also just bandai's production capacity and like i said we'll come back to this a little bit more uh, towards the end but you know there is a lot of things that everybody would like Bandai to make and they can't make everything all at once, essentially. So those are kind of like some of the main issues that people have with the Master Grade line at the moment. I think the main things really just being kind of the uh, lack of releases in general and also just kind of the lack of consistency in general with the Master Grade line as far as like defining what is kind of the standard baseline for the line. Um, I have seen a few other kind of points of contention uh, that people make with the Master Grade line that I think are kind of a, a bit weird or silly in my opinion, but just to mention the other kind of complaints that I see, I see some people like mentioning like, I only build Master Grades, so if Bandai's not gonna make Master Grades, there's no reason for me to spend my money or like no way for me to spend my money or support Bandai if they're not gonna make Master Grades. In that case, I mean like, that's kind of a you problem if you only restrict yourself to building Master Grades. I can understand if you, for your display, you want them all to be kind of standard or something like that, but I mean, I would say if you're the kind of person that only builds master grades uh, and you're shying away from the full mechanics line, for example, just because they don't have master grade on the box, 
you know, try the full mechanics line or, you know, try some other different types of model kits or something like that. I feel like it's not really a very valid complaint, really, to be honest. Another complaint that I see quite often, especially related to some of the older master grades that did include screws, is people complaining about the screws. I'll tell you guys, more often than not, if I'm building an older master grade that has screws, I just won't even use the screws. You oftentimes don't really even need it. Uh, other times, I mean, if you do, what I would recommend you guys to do is drill out the screw hole a little bit beforehand, because a lot of times, the only issue that I honestly ever run into with using the screws is that they're really, really tight a lot of times. So you just drill out a little bit first before you put the screw in and it's fine. Or otherwise, like I said, you just, just don't use the screw. But again, it's not really something I feel like is really worth complaining too much about. And another thing just kind of related to that is just older master grades in general. People, you know, if they're fairly new to building Gunpla and, you know, they've built a couple of modern kits and then they pick up a master grade kit, which is a pretty old one, you know, 20 years or more old, and then complaining about, you know, the lack of details or just like the uh, lack of articulation or anything, whatever could, what kind of would be the regular issues that you would run into for building an older kit like that. You know, you just have to kind of do your research ahead of time and, you know, look up reviews, pretty much any kit that exists. I'm sure you could find at least one review somewhere online of that kit, or you can at least find photos or anything just to kind of familiarize yourself, you know, to know what you're getting yourself into ahead of time that, you know, this is a master grade kit, which is a lot older, not going to be quite as nice as this, maybe these other newer ones that you've just recently built. Last thing is uh, people complaining about why doesn't this kit have an MG when it's like a pretty obscure mobile suit, like, I don't know, saying, why don't we have a master grade Zigok E, for example, like, which we do have a, a high grade kit of that, but you know, just because it's an obscure like design that maybe we have a kit of in a different line or maybe just don't have any kits of it at all, especially that definitely wouldn't be the case, but um, just because, you know, it's a design that exists out there. You I mean, you just kind of have to keep in mind, you know, Bandai, of course, is worried about what's going to be able to sell. And if it's a kit, you know, that maybe they do make an HG of that particular kit. Is it going to actually be popular enough and sell enough as a master grade kit? You know, master grade kits you know, have to be pretty popular in order to sell enough units and something like that's somewhat obscure. It's just not going to be able to sell as well. So let's talk about the future of the Master Grade line. Going into the future, what are some of the things that I expect uh, for the line? And what are some of the things that I would like to see in the line? Now, one of the things that I uh, would love to see is them to at least, like I mentioned before, include water slides in all the kits. I would like to see this kind of in general more through a lot of Bandai's kits, but at least in the Master Grade kits to include um, water slides. I think one of the nice things that I've never seen any kind of like a proof or anything from Bandai confirming this, but it seems like uh, earlier on in the Master Grade line, the Master Grade line was kind of more tailored for kind of like a little bit more experienced builders and kind of a little bit more experienced modelers. And that was kind of their uh, target audience for that. I think going back to that would be a great uh, thing for Bandai to do. They have plenty of model kits with the entry grade line, the high grade line, and even if like, you know, beginners wanted to build 100 scale kits and they want something not quite as complex or not something a little bit more beginner friendly, you have the full mechanics line now for that. So I think taking master grades back to kind of being the model grade line kind of for a little bit more experienced model kit builders, uh, I think would be a great way for Bandai to go with that. One of the things would be for them to include uh, water slides back in there at least and then also maybe the little detail parts just kind of a crossing my fingers wishing on that that would be nice as well I think to add those back into there another thing too would be just to include a set of fixed pose hands uh, in the master grade kits of course there's a lot of kind of debate as to some people love the fully articulated hands uh, some people love the fixed pose hands some people like the like uh, half articulated hands or just like the swappable fingers like you see on like the master grade seed kits and stuff and a lot of master grade kits recently where they just swap the fingers but I think you know maybe include just both just include a set of articu fully articulated hands and then also include a, just a small runner of just like uh, all your standard fixed pose hand parts like you see for example Kotobukiya doing in the armor core kits. All the armor core kits come with like a little, separate little runner just with all your different fixed pose hands on there. So I think that that would be great if Bandai would do that just kind of a standard for the Master Grade line. Another thing that I just kind of think would be nice to be included with more Master Grade kits would be uh, action bases. So we get action bases very inconsistently. Again, like sometimes we get them in kits and sometimes we don't. Uh, at the very least in any kit that has like a transforming gimmick, I think it would be nice to have an action base because you kind of need the base in order to kind of have it displayed in its transformation, whether it be like Wave Rider or whatever mode. Uh, so at the very least in any kit like that, like the Zeta Verka, for example, just recently released, did not include a base. Again, I understand Bandai wants to sell those action bases separately, so that's why they typically don't include them. Uh, but I think, again, 
design for the master grade line just kind of as a staple of the line it could be something kind of nice to include there i think it would be really interesting and this was brought up in our discord and i really agree with this idea uh to include other kind of versions other than just version katoki uh, other than just like a verka line to also have maybe uh, other ver lines of different artists so like uh, version kondo version uh izubuchi version nagano something like these some other like really famous popular gundam mecha designers having uh like a line and it doesn't necessarily have to be something that we get like every year but you know maybe one or two releases out you know here and there just as some like something like Verka, but just for these different gunman designers, I think would be really cool for Bandai to do. I think people would love it. I think it'd be something that would be very unique for that line. Another thing that it seemed like Bandai was kind of starting to do for a while and unfortunately has gotten away from was timing their releases of having a Master Grade kit and a kind of our RE100 kit to be coming out at the same time, kind of like paired releases, like we saw the 2.0 uh, F91 Gundam Master Grade kit come out and they released the full mechanics Big Nagina at the same time as the kind of kits that go together. I thought that was really cool and I would love for them to go back to doing that. I understand the issue with that is for people that can only afford or only want to get one, you know, they're gonna sell more of one and maybe less of the other. And so they wanna, in order to kind of sell as much as they can of both, they had just released them at separate times so that people can afford to buy both. Um, and that's probably the reason why it went that way. And I think in general, like we were talking about with just kind of the lack of releases or wanting uh, more variety, I think it would just be nice to see some more variety in the Master Grade line. They don't need to, I mean, of course, for sales reasons, they're sticking to what are gonna be the most popular mobile suits. But I mean, if we go back to like the 2000s where we were seeing so many more Master Grade releases, we saw a lot of different like stuff, like the Gym Sniper and things like that, for example, like these days, they were to make a master grade gym sniper kit undoubtedly it would be a premium bandai kit so just to see some of like these less popular mobile suits and like even though i was just saying a minute ago like it's kind of it's kind of a waste of time to you know wish that wish and hope that bandai will make these obscure mobile suits out as master grade kits but you know if we're getting to the point where we're getting master grade kits more regularly uh, just to wish for a little bit more kind of obscure stuff, which is more variety in general, just variety among like popular and less popular, I mean, but like different lines, of course. So like, for example, from Gundam X, the only two Master Grades we have from that entire series is the Gundam X and the Double X. I like to see some more Master Grades out from that particular series, for example. And as far as like how many releases we would be getting out a year, I think, you know, it would be nice to have more, but I think at least quarterly would be really nice. So if like four Master Grades a year, I think would be a good amount. That would still allow Bandai to keep, you know, a lot of their production capacity for everything else that they're making, because they are making all sorts of other different model kit lines and, you know, you know, primarily focus on the HG line because those sell the best. Uh, but it's not like having to devote too much of the resources to Master Grade, but still coming out with Master Grades and fairly consistently and regularly, I think quarterly would be a really nice amount of releases per year. Uh, of master grades going forward if they were able to do that and a last note on that i think just kind of in general they don't need to be so worried about like breaking the mold with every master grade release they have to make is something like include some new and amazing gimmick and everything they kind of have their branch lines for that now so they have mgsd like i said mgex for like really showing off what they can do uh, kind of with the best of their technology with that line i think for master grades just trying to focus on making their making some sort of standard for that line uh, i honestly don't care too much in terms terms about like the lack of consistency of like the external details or like the styling of it like for example we have the Master Grade Freedom 2.0 for example is really highly detailed highly stylized version of the Freedom Gundam and then we have some other Master Grades out in the line uh, like the Jagan for example is something from a completely different series for one so I think that's part of the reason but uh, you know very low detail level as far as like the external detail on that and kind of very much more kind of anime accurate kind of style for that that visual consistency visual consistency or lack of consistency i guess i should say doesn't bother me too much it's like different lines so i understand but just kind of having some sort of um just kind of standard that they go by for those releases i think whether that being like uh, a full, you know, much more detailed inner frame for those, even if that bumps up the cost of the kit a little bit. I think that at least gives us some sort of standard for the line that uh, you know what to expect from those releases. And it gives particularly new builders and new customers to Bandai, you know, a good expectation or a good sense 
of they can know what to expect uh, from that series. So last thing uh, to talk about here in this video, I just want to kind of, again, like I said, go back to playing devil's advocate a bit, like for Bandai's part. And as I've kind of been mentioning the whole time, you know, the main thing is for Bandai is they're just concerned about what's going to just make the money at the end of the day. So, you know, for example, if they put out an HD kit, it costs less for them to produce that kit. It has fewer runners, fewer parts in general, less uh, designing and pre-production on that. Uh, the actual physical production of it, it takes less molds. So if they have, you know, only so many mold machines and only so many molds that they need to produce, the molds are really expensive. Uh, the mold machines are expensive as well. And so, you know, if they only need to devote, you know, six molds and six machines to build to putting out this kit rather than, you know, 15 or 20 different runners that they're putting out for a master grade kit, it's much more cost effective for Bandai to do that. And they can sell many more of those units. Also, once the kit is produced, then once it's in the box, in order to ship those, you can imagine if they have like a full pallet uh, of kits that they're shipping out, they can fit, you know, maybe 200 MGs on a pallet. Whereas if it's HGs, they can fit like seven or 800 maybe on with just a single pallet. So they're able to move more units and they're able to, you know, still make a good profit on those uh, with less production costs. And so it's just generally easier for Bandai to make money off of smaller kits uh, that don't require as much um, production costs and production resources devoted to the making of those kits. So the other thing just kind of to keep in mind is that Bandai's primary audience, like I said, is still mostly in Japan and still mostly kids. So, you know, uh, if they're just trying to sell model kits for especially younger audiences, the HG kits are more appealing. They're more appealing just because they're cheaper to buy for the parents, because especially for kids, if they're not buying that with their own money, you know, parents are much more likely to say, OK, I'll buy this for you if it's a you know, $15 high grade versus a $30, $40, $50 $50 master grade kit, for example. That and the fact that, like I mentioned earlier, Bandai has also in recent years, you know, since the early 2000s when the master grade line was coming out with many, many more kits, Bandai has also expanded quite a bit in terms of the different model kits that they're making. So like all of their one piece model kits and all the figureized model kits and, you know, Star Wars, not so much nowadays, but, uh, you know, they've diversified quite a bit into making a lot of these different kinds of model kits, not primarily only Gunpla. So that's another reason why, you know, they only have so much production capacity that they're able to do. They are fortunately working on building a new uh, factory so that'll be nice and it'll be interesting to see if maybe one of the things that we get out of Bandai having another an additional factory is maybe we will see an uptick again in master grade kits now that they have a bit more production capacity with that so we will just have to wait and see anyway circling back all the way to the beginning of this video I don't think that the master grade line is going away anytime soon I don't think that it's being replaced with the full mechanics line or anything like that I think that unfortunately we're just seeing fewer master grade kits these days there are reasons for that, but hopefully it'll improve in the future. Uh, I love the Master Grade line as well, and I know a lot of you guys do too. I would say, you know, in the meantime, whatever Bandai does put out, whether it be the MG Verka, MG SD, MG EX, or, you know, hopefully some other just standard MGs sometime soon, we'll get an announcement for that, whatever that may be, whatever the next one may be. Um, you know, enjoy those kits and enjoy some of the other kits that Bandai makes because they make fantastic model kits, you know, whatever they are. Bandai really is just kind of the best at what they do. Uh, so a lot of times, you know, you may have your complaints, you may have your gripes and things that you want that Bandai's not making or things that Bandai's making that you don't want. Um, but they do make a lot of stuff and they make really great products. So, I mean, you really can't complain too much at the end of the day. Uh, but that's the current state of Master Grade. Let me know your guys' thoughts down in the comment section. I'm sure there's probably some points that I missed or some points you guys may agree or disagree with. Let me know. Let me know in the comments what you guys would like to see going forward with the Master Grade line. Uh, would any of you like to see the Master Grade line gone? I don't know, but I'm sure there's probably some people out there who maybe just like, yeah, I don't care. Just get rid of the Master Grade line and just do only this. Uh, let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below, guys. If you also want to just check out some of the kits for yourself, of course, you know, you can check out all the kits available here at USA Gundam Store. You can check the link down in the video description below. Uh, we've got all sorts of stuff there. Also, been recently doing the deal of the day here at USA Gundam Store. We've been putting like a particular kit on sale. A lot of times recently it's been Master Grades. So if you guys are wanting to pick up some Master Grades for a big discount, make sure you're just following on social media so you can see what the deal of the day is on those. Anyway, that's it for this video, guys. Again, thank you to all of you so much for your support. Like the video, comment, uh, subscribe. It's greatly appreciated. Until next time, guys, have a great day. I look forward to reading all of your comments. Later.